Hello and welcome to the Six Degrees of Feature Film podcast. I am Maverick, also known as Brienne, also known as Miss Movies. Wow. And I, I'm a Jodie Foster for today with a little southern accent. Sure. A little terrible southern accent that she does. You could be Little Bill. I'll be or, Little Bill. No, you're Little what Bill. What are these references to? Just Maverick. movies that we're going to be talking about oh, today. Oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> oh, you said you were going to be Maverick. Oh, I thought I was thinking Top Gun. Oh, you, you call yourself yes. Maverick. You can from... be Iceman. Absolutely, I will absolutely be Ice Man. Okay, good. Ice Man. I'll be the volleyball in the volleyball. Hello, scene. hey I bet guys, you will. what's up? <laughs> Call me Wilson. Hi, I'm Stacey Howard. We have a podcast we're doing today, and we have a guest. Oh my gosh! And it's John Roca. Hello, As everyone. you can see, he's returned. He is the first guest that ever graced us on this uh, podcast with his presence. Thank I you. remember that. Um, it was the first time that we ever had anyone, so I had no idea how audio works. Yes. And it just came out terrible in terms of audio. That's and awesome. and it sucks when that happens because like when you have a good guest, you want things to go well. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I like things to mess up though because it's more real. That's true. You know what I'm saying? That's if true. You, if you come in to listen for a polished thing, and then you're kind of losing the personality that happens when things go wrong. That's when you get a real window into people. And that's fun. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Like when I have go off on a tangent about the mummy for 15 minutes. And every she has episode. She reel me back every, every episode. single episode. Which mummy? Happens. The 1950s 1999. One? The oh, 1950. That's not even the good one. <laughs> that's the best one. No. no. The sequel is the best one. No. The, the mummy returns. You mean with the, the rock? One, with the, no. The one, Which one? Rock is the, oh yeah, he comes at the beginning? He comes, yes. He's yeah. the Scorpion beginning. King at the He's beginning, right? beginning, right, right. beginning right. yes. He also has his own movie, The Scorpion King. Well, it's yes, actually great. That. It's yeah. actually really, really good. It's actually it's, not. It's bad, but good. it's really, really good. <laughs> what are you talking it, about? It's good in the very entertaining <laughs> way. And when the woman comes up in mm -hmm. the water, she's all covered in the head. Okay, wait. All right, pause. Sorry. We're not yes. talking about the mummy. No. Again, damn it. Every Again. time I go off and I do Every episode. All right. Take a drink for any time that Stacey mentions the mummy. Yes. And or any anything Coffee from the mummy yeah so this is six degrees of feature film what we do here is we take one movie which is our feature film and we show how six other films link up to that in some way shape or form mm -hmm. and then we do some ridiculous bits at the end so always always a good time oh always. you know what we started always those fun. bits after your yeah. guest spot so you'll this get to be new. part of it this is all exciting yes. Yes. we have a whole new, new format we're yeah. all snippy snappy over here professionals just kidding. Before we get started, though, John, I want you to tell oh. uh, those that are watching um, about yourself. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm John Roca. I'm a host uh, here in town now. I do some voice services as well every once in a while, but mostly this is what I'm focusing on. I host the Top Ten Show over on Collider. I host a new show called Super Animation Game Time, which used to be cast of characters at Geek Nation. We are now at Geek and Sundry. Yuri Lowenthal and I interview somebody from the world of voiceover, video games, animation, and we're talking all the way nice. from, like, writers to sound booth engineers to voiceover people to executives all across the board and agents and what have you we have interviewed cool. everybody so it's really cool we want to do an all encompassing and it's not like what was your favorite episode of this no it's more like how you got into this what got into mm -hmm. what what makes you keep going what do you enjoy about it blah 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 and we get to know them from their like birth to their uh to the, where they are now so it's a really cool episode that's awesome a really cool show yeah, yeah. are those pre-recorded or are those live those are live because it's oh, on nice. the twitch channel yes on the alpha platform over at geek and sundry and then of course my podcast the cinephiles which i'm very proud of now doing with steve morris my film professor friend we break down one Film before the year classic before a classic film before the year 2000 we talk about it over an hour which is really great awesome yeah what's your most current episode uh we just did la confidential in honor of the passing of curtis hansen and mm -hmm. then we just dropped monty python in the holy grail yes oh. i gotta listen to that yeah, yeah. Uh, my, our film executive friend uh my uh from hasbro michael ross guested on it and it was great and he brought us uh money python beers which apparently they oh, have nice. holy how grail did beers. those taste oh, no. they were really good did you drink them from a holy grail cup yes he brought two was goblets good, holy good. Grail cups. was it the good. cup of the carpenter <laughs> no that's brian brian that's life of brian oh uh, well right? no what i'm thinking is indiana jones yes. in the last oh. Oh. poorly <laughs> that's my favorite line in the whole movie it is yeah do you know it's not? But I thought Kingdom of the Crystal Skull was your favorite one. <laughs> no, what you, no, Last Crusade is my favorite. Burn. I Slow don't down. think Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is that bad. Moving on because I don't want everyone to hate. Me. All right, all right. Let's what are we in. talking about today? What's our feature film our that we're gonna link off of? Feature film today is Hell or High Water, oh. which came out August twenty sixth, two thousand sixteen. So it is a current film. And we will do our best to not do complete spoilers, but we're going to talk oh, about okay. it. So, and you know, Stacy hasn't seen it. So, I did not get a chance to see it, but 
as a Texas native, I feel like I've probably lived, lived it. this film. Yes, you did. So this is actually a biography of my life. Wow. Keller High Waters oh. in theaters. Uh-oh. Uh, yes. Did you play Chris? Well, is Chris Pine based on you? <laughs> Chris or, Pine is based on me. Or is okay. it Ben Foster? Which I, Both. I feel like you're the more the Chris Pine than the Ben Foster. I, I am a Pine nut. I yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So, yes. I think yes. you're the lady at the hotel that checks them in. Sure. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> Anyways. Sure. <laughs> sure. All right. Is that so, lady? Is that accepted. any action? Uh, no, yeah. just some, just, someone. Just a the lady. West Texas native. Just this a lady stars Jeff, Briz- Jeff Bridges, yeah. Chris Pine, Ben Foster, and your brother from another mother, yes. Gil Birmingham. Yeah. It's just like him. This was directed by David McKenzie, who also did Start Up, and I know that's a film that you like, Stacey. One of my favorite indie films. Mm-hmm. And written by Taylor Sheridan, who also wrote Sicario. Which is one of my favorite films from last year. Fantastic. It was criminally underlooked by the Academy. Absolutely. Um, the budget was $12 million, and as of now, it has made $29.3 million mm-hmm. at the box office. Definitely well-deserved. Um, I was kind of surprised at how much I liked this movie. Oh, interesting. Um, I had heard good things, so I knew going in, like, what you know when you hear good things about a film from people that you like Mm -hmm. and respect in the movie uh reviewing community then you kind of go in with a a little bit more of a oh maybe this will be something that i like too right Mm. um which also unfortunately works on the other side well as well when they say something bad and you're like oh maybe i won't like this either and then you go in with that mindset and then you're like oh i should shouldn't have just i should have just not listened to anyone Mm -hmm. or looked at anything i should just come up with my own opinions going in yeah anyways hell or high water um (laughs) jeff bridges has marbles in his mouth the entire time but i'm totally into it it's like what i don't know yeah. That was a perfect southern accent you just did. Whoa. He's, he's doing his own version of Late Pacino. Like he's doing his own, like you're seeing him in all this. It's basically another extenuation of Rooster Cogburn from True Grit. It's another mm-hmm. version of that uh, ability, that speaking with that kind of accent. And he does the he does the grumble in the middle of lines now. And he's you know, like he did in Crazy Heart too, a little bit of that in Crazy Heart as well. So all of that is just his go to when he's playing any kind of southern character, no matter where they're from. I feel like it. You guys are the accents you guys are putting on sound like uh, what's his face from Silence of the Lambs that plays um, Ted Levine. Yeah, Ted, Ted Levine. Levine. Yes, yeah. not in Silence Slow of down. the Lambs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He <laughs> doesn't have that accent, but in other things that he's done, like he played the, yes. the chief of police mm-hmm. on Monk. Yeah. Loved him that. on Monk. Yeah, and Very he has good. like that kind of like little <laughs> like this. He plays a little thing like he can't talk through right. his own mustache, That's you true. know, like it's too big in the sound. The words just sit there. The words just sit there. Mm-hmm. Just, <laughs> just hitting it right here. Just hitting it right here. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. That's exactly I love what it. it sounds like. Hello. No, For those that don't know what Hell or High Water is, uh, let me give you a little synopsis. A divorced father and his ex-con brother resort to a desperate scheme in order to save their family's ranch in West Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have one person that's kind of like reluctant about it the entire time and feels bad, um, but not bad enough to like do the right thing. Just bad enough to feel bad about it. (laughs) I don't know. He he does the right thing for his code of ethics, right? Okay. It's not necessarily the right, we might not think it's the right thing, but I think he does, he doesn't go as far as Ben Foster does. And Ben Foster to his credit as his brother doesn't let him. And that's a good thing because he lets uh, Chris Pine maintain his, ethics to a degree so that he can go forward with it but what you're talking about is absolutely correct too that point of view is valid because jeff bridges shares that point of view and when they have that final confrontation or conversation at the end it's that he's saying Mm -hmm. that to him no matter what you've done no matter how good you think you've been this is going to haunt you and that's so powerful you know because the the, you're tempted to let him get away with that as an audience because you understand what pine is going through in his point of view but kind of have to be reminded that it's just because you think it's right doesn't mean it is the right thing right i mean there are times when i was a kid that that still haunt me i stole some money from Mm -hmm. my parents (gasps) maybe like two dollars to go to the hardware store down the street to buy a candy bar and i still at hardware stores yeah yeah, you know by the register oh i guess yeah yeah and feel the guilt that guilt just washes over me (laughs) i still I can still remember it 
and like them being like, did you take something from me today? <laughs> no, no. They're just such parents. Like, I know what you did. Uh, yeah, because they always course. know. It's kind of yeah. like the Jeff Bridges character. They know or they're going to find out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's more of a matter of how they're going to find out. Yeah. Such a good film was. I mean, like yeah. the the pacing, everything. Like, I don't know how this podcast goes. So, do I just yeah, jump just in keep going, just okay. keep going. Okay, yeah. okay here's and the deal. Then we'll I, eventually move on to the other one. Okay, but, I absolutely yeah. love the film. I, I mm-hmm. was so surprised, like you, Brian. I was so surprised how much I enjoyed the film. How mm-hmm. because they said from the creators of Sicario, so already they had me in. There mm-hmm. wasn't a strong marketing campaign. It's an independent film. It's a smaller film. Mm-hmm. So you saw it on Facebook or you saw things in the ads. Like you, you didn't really push. But when you, but everybody, like you said, most people just loved it. So you mm-hmm. go and see it, and it was so good. The script was fantastic. The shots, the scenery, the, oh, where the characters. Yeah, because it's really West. I mean, it I really is work West today, Texas. So I need to go, go and see it. Yeah. I will. Or rent it on iTunes. I'm sure it's on iTunes now, but like it's, it's so. Uh, it so puts you in the world of that area of this country and mm-hmm. the anger and the frustration and their their own way of dealing with the cops, their own way of dealing with mm-hmm. the local cops and the and the state cops. Like there's a and there's a, uh, the federal cops. There's definitely a, an, an anger towards them, which we see now, of course, in our political climate now. Like there's it, they capture a little bit of that in the film, and you understand, like you come away with it with a, with a deeper understanding of what these issues are and what the situation is so that that prompts what happens in the movie and what motivates them throughout the movie. I like what you mentioned about they have their own way of dealing Mm -hmm. with, you know, cops and government, because that's very much essential to, you know, the lifestyle of not just the South, but especially Texas Mm -hmm. in general is that, you you know, you have your own sense of right and wrong and your Mm -hmm. own sense of justice Mm -hmm. i guess and you know we're just so used to kind of dealing with things ourselves and like not involving you know someone else Mm -hmm. that that totally makes sense what you're talking about in this movie when you mentioned that it reminds me a lot of do you guys remember winter's bone yeah jennifer lawrence was in it she was she was on john hawks yeah she Mm -hmm. was nominated for her uh first academy award for that film and they coming from uh i think it's west virginia Mm -hmm. i guess have their own you know sense of right and wrong their own sense of the law they don't trust it they just trust themselves and doing what you know they feel is right to you know justification and everything so that that reminds me a little bit that film of what you're talking about here so yeah texas always has this uh, to me of all the 50 states texas is that state's like we're choosing to be part of the united states yeah. we well, don't have to be yeah we don't have to <laughs> yeah and that's right and that's always been our attitude that's from why the they beginning. call it we the play by our of own texas rules because yeah. we were you know a territory of what five different yeah five different countries and right. then we were our own country and then we you know joined yeah. the united states so that's right. why that's yeah. why the theme park is called six flags over texas oh texas go, has their own like brand of everything so like if yeah. you get a beer in texas it's like texas budweiser right. texas right. miller light or whatever Pepper is a <laughs> texas soda <laughs> Fort Worth, they texas. rebrand it for yeah. their yeah. own no no, no it's like that it's from texas yeah. it's like it's, based in texas. it's so insane it's Freebirds, lots of fun stuff the fabulous free birds Mm-hmm. Texarkana. I remember that. That's one of my yeah. favorite things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. This is another film that I really like Ben Foster in, and mm. I feel like he plays this note of a bad guy really well. Yeah. From Alpha Dog oh, to guy? this. Oh, and like, uh, 310 to Yuma is fantastic. I didn't see that. Oh, I want to see that. I haven't seen that one. I know. I know. I know. I know. There's a lot of things that I need to do because Westerns was on the wheel. It was. For uh, the Schmodown. Need to go over those westerns. Let's we'll start with the searchers. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm you gonna have, be watching. That's our number one from the top ten show. One of our yeah. t- no, it's our number two, I guess. Because that's the number one on AFI. Yep, mm-hmm. because it should be number one. Because mm-hmm. it, it started it. I yeah. had to defer to Matt and Hal <laughs> on that show, but yeah. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Unforgiven because yeah. if you guys want to start with our links, let's off, do it. That's our our first link. Ah. That's going to be westerns. westerns. We're going to go westerns that were made after 1990 mm-hmm. specifically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and we're gonna do Unforgiven, which is actually you you brought Unforgiven when you were first on this show yes. as yeah. one of your links. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we've seen it. Mm-hmm. So well, now let's talk about it. Sure. Yeah. Because I was not so I just had watched it like, oh hey, this is on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen it. I know it won Best Picture as mm-hmm. I've been doing my research and Clint Eastwood, I believe, won Best Director. He did. Um and I watched it and was like, oh my gosh, no wonder. It's no wonder that this yeah. went best picture. Mm-hmm. Now, this this so movie good. set about or set a precedent of what is the modern Western. Right. Correct? Mm-hmm. I mean, 
Well, yeah. That, at least that's yeah. what a lot of people comment on. Well, it's it's also like kind of it continues the tradition of the neo western, which mm-hmm. is this make this undercutting the idea of the legends of mm-hmm. western, right? Like right. if you study the history of westerns, Randolph Scott, it, Randolph Scott's the one that really solidified westerns. A number of other directors, obviously John Ford, John Wayne, the early westerns solidified this myth of the West. What mm-hmm. happens in the late fifties, early sixties, which coincides with what's happening in the country, is they start to create these neo westerns that undercut. And Mag- Magnificent Seven does that. It begins the process of undercutting this idea of neo-Westerns. So uh, the idea of Westerns by undercutting the legends of them because they have that scene where he talks about, oh yeah, I'd want to be a gunslinger. The young kid wants to be a gunslinger. And then they go, yeah, you want to live a life where you have no wife, you have no family. You don't know where your next meal is coming from. You're constantly moving from town to town and you always have a target on your back. And mm-hmm. it's a way of just deconstructing mm-hmm. the myths. And uh, mm-hmm. Clint Eastwood in the script, he'd held on to the script like, I think 15 years till he was old enough to do it. Mm-hmm. And so right. he did it and it's fantastic because once again, that whole thing where uh, where Hackman is uh, 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 going back and forth with Saul Rubinick, who is the writer, about the legends that he is writing. And you know, he calls Richard Harris the duck of death. Mm-hmm. And he tells what really happened <laughs> in the stories that Richard Harris is making himself a hero out to be and all that. And so it's it's really fantastic to watch that in the film. And But still, it's still, and this is what's so great about the film, it deconstructs the entire myth of the West and then it reconstructs the myth all over again when uh, Clint Eastwood comes out of that haze and it becomes William Money again. And you're like, wow, that's mm-hmm. it. And But still find the moments at the end where he has a conversation with, with Saul's like, Saul's like, who, who did you shoot first? And he goes, I never been, you know, I never really cared about the order. It just whoever was in the way. Mm-hmm. And so this whole idea that, oh, they're so smart that in the time they can think and bullshit. It's just about who I, who's mm-hmm. in front of me so I can win and get out of there alive, you know? And mm-hmm. so it's so such a fantastic film. Blah, blah. <laughs> I mean, you could just keep like going. I'll just I keep like listening. Going. You could just keep no, going because no. I'll just I get sit self-conscious. back. No, I get no, I love it. I'm just a guest. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. you have. I love it when people take it and like go with it because I know that you are passionate about this film and that you mm. love this film. Um, this I stars do. Clint Eastwood, Gene Hackman, Morgan Freeman, and Richard Harris, as you said, yeah. um, directed obviously, but Clint Eastwood mm-hmm. and written by David Webb Peoples, who also wrote Blade Runner, 12 Monkeys, and Lady Hawk, yeah. to name a few. The Oscars it won, uh, as we said, Best Picture, Best Director, as well as Best Supporting Actor, which is Gene Hackman, mm-hmm. um, and Best Editing. And it was nominated for Screenplay, Cinematography, Art and Set Direction, and Sound. Mm-hmm. Um, Gene Hackman in this movie let's let's break down just for a second sure. because i was like i the first movie i saw like kind of west not maybe not the first western i saw but one that i saw before this mm-hmm. like years before this was the quick and the dead where he's oh, yeah. like the head of the town mm-hmm. this is another movie where he's the head of the town and i was like wow these are very different films yeah. um and he's playing a similar character in like terms of like motivations and things like that um but that movie just did not work well no it's sam raimi it's a horror guy an evil dead guy trying to do a western so yeah i mean i love russell crowe i love sharon stone that cast leonardo dicaprio the reason i saw that was because leonardo dicaprio was in it and when you are in high school and you're in love with leonardo dicaprio you go to blockbuster and you rent every single leonardo dicaprio movie so that's where that gotcha. started. Fair enough. I probably owned it at some point. Sure. I don't know. I don't know. I, I respect it. He's so young and <laughs> he's so young and nubile in that film. And he's so. He's little Leo. He is. And he's got that swagger and he thinks he's all that. Mm. And he does a great job when he ends up getting, uh, gets his comeuppance. He did, that's a great actual scene. His, his yes. tears and his, I'm like, wow, that's really in the middle of this wacky little film. You have a real emotional moment. Is it as emotional as in Romeo plus I'm Juliet when he <laughs> falls to the sand and it's just like, <laughs> I am no way. Oh, Fortune's fool. Fortune's fool. And it's like <laughs> I, st- is- I have a special place for that film in my heart. I, I, I love like Romeo it. plus sign Juliet. Like it and it's not Romeo and Juliet. It's Romeo plus sign Juliet. We need to establish that. Know, why are we establishing that? Baz Luhrmann, I don't know. But it's not plus sign, Julie. You, you but because it, it. it's Romeo plus sign, there's no and. Like the word is not and, it's just a big old plus sign. It it's is. like a cross. Well, you know the plus sign symbolizes and, don't you? I do know that, okay. but it's to distinguish it from other Romeo and Juliet <laughs> Oh, movies. I see what you're saying. Good yeah, point, Stacey. Yeah, because okay. from like the 60s. I where defer. I remember watching, yes. okay, in English class when we were studying Shakespeare, yes. we also watched the 1960s movie, yep. and she shows her uh, tatas, she does. her kibbles and bits. 
her lady sacks are yes. all out Olivia and we Hussle. were like whoa we're we talking very about? immature <laughs> oh a, we're talking yeah. about romeo and, yeah, and yes. but it was like we were like whoa we're gonna see boobs in class what is this and our teacher tried to like fast forward through it and she messed up and we were yes. like ah. always that's always happens very, still frame. yes mm -hmm. had a still frame so sorry kids yeah um, franco zeparelli directed that one with the, he also did the gibson's hamlet and uh really yeah the same director that one that same that movie was super weird because his mm -hmm. scene with gun close he looks like he's kind of like having sex with her a yeah. little bit well, and we were all super like what, what is happening and that yeah. was the point of it but mm -hmm. as you know 16 year olds we were like i don't understand what's, yeah what's this feels going uncomfortable on. the one with uh kate winslet was way yes better, kenneth like. brown huh? okay yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this is that's hamlet right. that we're and that, discussing and that's an unedited one by the way that's oh, yeah, that four hours. hours yeah the four entire six four hours yeah if you haven't seen it see both versions because one is very hollywood-esque the other one is like pure to form and yeah. you're like, this is a lot to sit through, but I know I need to sit through it because it's art and smartness. Smartness, smartness. is yeah. where we're getting back Hashtag. to anyway, our back to Unforgiven. <laughs> yes. Um, I do want to like, here. I have a Schmodown trivia for you guys. Sure. Okay. Okay. This is the third Western to win Best Picture. Mm -hmm. Can you name? Let's just say oh, one. God. One the other Searchers. one. The Searchers did not win. Come on. You no. Know. Shit. I just saw this today. I just saw this seven. trivia. No. The Magnificent Seven did not. No. I will give Damn one it. more, one Stage more guess. Coach. Damn it! Nope. No. Okay. No. Here's what. Son one of them God. is Dances with Wolves. Oh, oh that's not a western. Oh, that's what it, it says. Oh. That's what it says. Oh. The other one oh. is Cimarron. Oh, the first Cimarron? one is Cimarron. What the hell is Cimarron? Nineteen thirty-one. 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 I'm not good. At I never heard of this States. in my life. I don't think that's a movie. I think guaranteed. This is going to be on the Shmoda trivia for westerns. So remember everyone. Cimarron. Oh, Cimarron. 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 Cimarron now. Because Cimarron won almost every category it was nominated for. It won like 11 Oscars. Sure. It, won, it won a lot. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, I think it's one of the only two films ever win every category it was nominated for. Cimarron. Never heard of it. Titanic did that, right? Yes. Yeah. Titanic, Titanic did, did, that, did yeah. that. Titanic okay. did that. Yeah. Um, here's something that I thought was interesting that Clint Eastwood said. Okay, this film put pay put paid i don't know what that means to clint eastwood's long-standing statement why he would never win an oscar eastwood reckoned he would never be in the running because first i'm not jewish secondly Whoa. i make too much money thirdly and most importantly because i don't give a fuck there it is <laughs> yeah clint yeah clint eastwood <laughs> Such a fool. He is so he's such a cranky old man. But right? I heard he feeds squirrels in his office. Sure Have you guys seen that interview with Bradley Cooper where yeah. and he like names them too? He's like, Come here, you little guy. These little guys, they always just get in my I'm gonna like feed them little nuts or something. <laughs> I don't know. Nice but I don't know. He's, just, a, he's a weird guy. As I of twenty sixteen, this is his final western that he has done. Right. So okay. there were rumors if he's gonna do one final one, but he hasn't been able to do it yet. The, which is the end of the West. Mm. He's going to do a character at the end of the West as technology comes into play. He is one of the last cowboys and goes on one last uh, thing and then dies at the end. But they have not done the script. They haven't done the film yet. So. Mm. Well, that sounds uplifting. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> it's his way of saying goodbye to the Westerns, I guess. I guess so. Shall we move on to our next Western? Sure. sure. And I'm okay. excited about this. Okay, good. Um, we're going to be is doing... DiCaprio in this one? No, okay. he's not. Close. He's not. Uh, we're going to be doing Maverick. Which came out May twentieth, nineteen ninety four. Yep. Um. So Brett Maverick <laughs> needs money for a poker tournament, Bert. and he faces various comic mishaps and challenges, including a charming woman thief. Yes. Ooh. Um. So this is based on a television show. Yes. And I think this is one of the better television to film adaptations, although I didn't see the television show. So maybe I don't know. I, I just liked the movie. So mm -hmm. I assume that the show was also good. The show was fun. I'm not a big James Garner fan. So mm -hmm. I never was. a. I mean, I would see it every once in a while. He was a chill, laid back character. It was fun to watch. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Maverick film. Okay. So I will defer to you two about it. Uh, it's, sure. It's sure. a bit, it's so tongue in cheek the whole time. It's so cute. I like that. Yeah. I like that sometimes. Yeah. We got to go the flip side. So we did something very serious. Yes. And now yeah. we got to go to something a little bit more campy. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, Richard Donner directed this, mm -hmm. who also did Superman, Lethal Weapon, The Goonies. And it was written by Roy Huggins and William Goldman, starring oh. Mel Gibson, Jodie Foster, James Gardner, um, Alfred Molina. Mm -hmm. Woo! James Coburn, 
the budget was 75 million and made 183 million at the box office okay. and was nominated for one Oscar for costume design. Wow, there we go. I'm surprised it never did a sequel. It made double nice. its money, you know, double and a half what it's supposed to make. So. And Jodie Foster, like, freaking loves Mel Gibson. Mm -hmm. So you would think she'd want to work with him again, like, on this. But yeah. she mm -hmm. worked on, with him on, like, The Beavers. Yeah. Thing, right? Like, she, she keeps doing movies with him and keeps defending him. I, that's so crazy to me. It's, their relationship is so I saw so something crazy. that he's... Is it him I saw that was 10 years sober? I think it was in the news Ooh. just recently. Um, I don't know. Uh, Mel Gibson. Really? Yeah. Has it been 10 years since Sugar Tits? Yes. I didn't know that. Wow, huh? Has it really? Because I, I still say sugar tits, and I love I that I know phrase. you do. Like, I think that that's hilarious. <laughs> I know it's wrong. Uh, I call my boyfriend sugar tits all hello. the time. <laughs> Hopefully so, not, when, not when he's naked. That's not no, really good No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, he calls me sweet bottom. I don't know. It's like Sweet bottom's a little do. nicer than sugar tits. I'm going <laughs> to say that right now. I super funny. <laughs> um, has it, well, but I feel like those voicemails came out. Oh, yeah. Pretty recently. Remember to his, like. With his, Olga. Yeah. I deserve mm. to be blown first before the jacuzzi. That one was great. <laughs> that one was great. Wow, this is going places oh, I didn't think it would so go. In a far sometimes different you just want to. Sometimes you got to say what you want. I yeah. want the blowjob before the jacuzzi. Nothing wrong yes, with it. I mean, true. it kind of makes true. sense. Yeah. He's totally crazy. Otherwise, you're chlorinated. <laughs> You know, it's just it's probably relax. raw. I, I gotta relax. just <laughs> move on from here. <laughs> um, one of the things I like, I guess, Jodie Foster's clumsiness, like yeah. that was something that they decided to do after there was a scene that they were filming and he was supposed to help her out of the stagecoach. And mm -hmm. all he did was take her parasol and then like kind of walk away. And so she was left to get down off of this high stagecoach and like couldn't quite figure it out. And she kind of just tumbles. And so then they were like, we should just have her be kind of clumsy this whole time. Oh, wow. And so that kind of is how that worked in. And I think that's kind of cute. Mm -hmm. I like her clumsiness. She's, Me too. She's so cute in the film. She's she super is. adorable. Yeah, yeah. And adorable. her, like, you know, she Jodie Foster just putting on a terrible, terrible Southern accent. Yes. Just got molasses it's, coming out. Yeah, of her well, mail. he says that too. Yeah. He's like, this is not a good Southern accent. <laughs> and she's so <laughs> just, I like that, you know, she's putting on that she's like a terrible thief and has like, you know, terrible tells and everything. Mm -hmm. But like secretly she does get half his money in the end. Yeah. She said, I'm going to get 50% of your winnings and she steals half of his money in the end. So mm -hmm. I like that. Like, I like that maybe she's like trying to pretend to be kind of ditzy and a little bit and mm -hmm. clumsy and like, oh, I'm not that good at this job. I'm just depending on my looks and everything. But she gets what she set out for. Right. So you know, is she really that stupid? Is she really that clumsy? I don't think so, kids. I don't think so. There was a get that money, get that D. Yeah, is what is her her right. agenda there? That's right. <laughs> she's a... looking great, and she's got the lace gloves and the little big the net, the big thing with the dress, and how they have the fake big butt thing. She's looking the bustle. beautiful bustle, with the hair. Yeah. Bustle, sure, yeah. That's I think you guys made up that word. You're in tangent. You talked what? about that before. <laughs> that's not a real word. You guys talked about that before the episode. And we're like, let's trick Stacy and <laughs> teach her the wrong words. I'm that almost positive so that happened. So almost in the movie, it costs twenty five thousand to enter this uh, poker, yes. yeah. this po the World Series of Poker or whatever. And today, that entrance fee would be seven hundred and seventy thousand. What? Yeah. So that's the equivalent of what it would be today. Wow. I feel like that's that's pretty much my the cost of this house. Yeah. Yeah. With an additional thousand dollars. Wow. You just <laughs> sold out that you know much how you much your home is worth. <laughs> I'm trying to look up something because there's a there's a there was a film that's based that's kind of has the same kind of theory or kind of uh thing with she, the woman plays like she's not that smart and she gets oh into it's a poker dirty game. rotten scoundrels no no <laughs> darn because that one's good and i feel like there's no. the, like female con where, where in that that's it? conning where the cons it? it's, it's, it's like lady let's needs, see if let's see if our chat might know hand. what you're it's looking like for lady needs a hand or something like that i feel like this is almost every woman thief in a movie though like they always make her out to be like she's kind of a a clumsy thief or a bad thief but mm -hmm. she she really like gets what she needs you know you mean like, like i feel like that's part of like the game life? like because if you were a in, like every woman in real life you know? yes Wait, what? this is Wait, true what? out to steal your heart <laughs> <laughs> um, yes because i feel like if they made her be too good then she would like you know yeah. beating mel gibson you wouldn't like her but right. because she's like Oh, you know, poor little, poor little thing. She's so, mm -hmm. you know, inept yes. at her, at her skill set. You know, she's just kind of fumbling in the dark. Right. 
that you're like, oh, she's not that bad. You know, we kind of like her. She's kind of cute. I kind of want her to succeed in this theft. Might have a good point. Mm-hmm. So, John, the yes. chat wants to know what what you're looking up so they can maybe help you. Yeah, war. it's like a lady needs a hand or something like that, or give the lady a hand. And it's I, about a woman that's a con artist. Yeah, well, no, here's the deal. Uh, yeah, here, big hand for the little lady. That's what it's called. It's Henry Fonda. Okay. And Joanne Woodward, who is Paul Newman's wife. Oh. So what okay. happens is, what happens is they run this con as a husband and wife, and you don't know it in the film. Like at the beginning of the film, they go into this town, and he's playing this uh, poker game. It's a very famous poker game. It only happens once a year. Mm-hmm. Henry Fonda is playing it, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And his wife mm-hmm. is constantly badgering him. Like, Honey, why are you doing this? Like, please come back, the kids. Blah blah blah. So mm-hmm. the other guys at the poker are like irritated by this woman coming in and like. And then he has a fake heart attack or something happens to him in the, like at a bit of critical juncture in the poker game. Mm-hmm. And they he they drag him off and he's getting taken care of. Oh, well, sorry. And they're saying like, you've got to, you've got to, um, you've got to, you, he's got to keep, he's got uh, to forfeit his money because mm-hmm. he can't continue. And they said, unless, well, under the rules, I guess his wife could. So she mm. steps oh! in and completely fleeces him for the rest of the way. And, and yeah, you find yeah. out at the end that he was never sick. It's all a con they do from town to town because she's yes. the better poker player than oh, he is. Oh, I love it. So it's their way they, they run. They are the couple awesome. at Kellerman's in Dirty Dancing. Oh, oh yes. Stealing people's wallet. wallets. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, wait, why wouldn't she just play the poker game from the because, beginning? Because they don't allow women can't do it. Women. It's a woman. She's a woman. Oh. But they let her play because they feel bad that he had the heart attack, and that's the way they play that's it. Oh. It's such, it's such a great I little small western it. that people oh, should that's watch. Great. Okay, what lady? Yeah. What's it called? Give, Give the, the lady, lady a hand. hand. Give the lady a hand. Yeah. Okay, I'm watching it. Is yeah. that on Netflix? Or a big or hand? Like, no, big hand for the little lady. Big hand for the little lady. Yeah, which is that, a oh, phrase. See, big <laughs> hand. Yeah, for like, the little lady. Of the poker hand. <laughs> yeah. See, and in that title alone, <laughs> it proves my point of like, yes. oh, you're just a cute little lady right. and you're so enough to what you're doing and you poor little thing. And then, but really she's like fucking owning yes. everybody. Yes. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. So probably Jodie Foster the whole time, you know, she probably knew exactly what she was doing mm-hmm. and she uses well, all she of her did. resources yeah. and, you know, she's not, she, maybe she's not that clumsy. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's just like a, a little quirk she has to, you know, make her like, I guess, yeah. adorable, yes. likable. Here's you the know, horrible truth her. of life. Here's what? the horrible truth of life that men cannot accept. Lay it on us. Let's Women get, are massively smarter than we are. This is and we true. want to delude ourselves that this they that they're not. True. But the what we put on them in this society, it's a miracle. It, it's you have to understand the levels to which they're operating, which is why they're able to get what they want in most situations and get through the situations and figure it out and they live longer than us because they're just smarter. And that's the thing. And we don't want to admit it. Because we think we can put up buildings and crap, and that makes us so intelligent. But women are smarter about the real, the the, the minutia of life, and the nooks and crannies of life, and also the bigger picture, obviously. But they can mm-hmm. they go up and down the scale. So I'm just telling you, that's the truth. It's the details. That's right. Yeah, the, the details. Because we're all about little building things. things. But the big strong men are too busy to notice, <laughs> and the little weak women are the ones that really see. Everything. Yeah, they're never weak. All right, let's go in. Let's go into our links off of our movies. John, do you want to go first with your links off of Unforgiven? Unforgiven. Okay, how do we do links again? Why don't we go first? Yes, sure. And then you can see every guest. Okay, let me tell you what Brianne said to me. Do you know these films? You're good to go. Just show up and (laughs) talk. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, so we are going to, Stacy and I are linking off of uh, Maverick, yes. and we are going to do uh, movies that started as TV shows. Oh, yes. okay. Mm-hmm. And more specifically, um, that not weren't necessarily properties before. Like okay. they started as a TV show. They weren't mm-hmm. a comic before, or things like that. Or at right. least I don't so it's just a TV really show, did. and then they were like, yeah. this TV show is I think. great, let's make a film. Okay. You know what, I may have gotten that wrong. Because Adam's Family Values, Adam's Family could have been a comic before it was a, a TV show. But anyways. Oh. Basically, movies that are started as TV shows. What should yeah. I be thinking um, about while you're doing this? Uh, whatever you want. Oh, so, like, you're linking, off, Unforgiven you're linking off of Unforgiven. Okay. So, you could think Perfect. of Gene Hackman movies. Yes. You could think yeah, of other Clint Eastwood is, movies. They just have the same link. Like, so yeah, they don't have to fit the genre or anything. You know, I mean, yeah, if you wanted to do other like westerns okay. yeah. or uh, movies where there's a sidekick that you're like, is that really, are you sure that works as a sidekick? Anyways, yes. <laughs> I yeah. mean, for the time. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, Adam's you, Family you, Values. You making is, a crack about Morgan Freeman well, being because, in the movie because no, he's black? It, because would that really work in that time? Yes, there were black cowboys. Okay. Yes, especially. Uh, I just want to make west. sure. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Because I mean, you know, 
anyways uh, adam's family values november 19th 1993 is when this came out i went with the second one because i like the second one better than the first one mm. mainly because the kids go to summer camp and i find That's that to be hilarious best part of <laughs> any movie uh many any movie where it has a play mm -hmm. within the movie that is the best play within it, it a movie is. of anything it or things in that play. song eat us we're at when Thanksgiving tree. Eat us. I'm like, Eat really? Oh, Till I finish this great. song. <laughs> Giant turkey. Oh, and then Wednesday, Adams, just wait. We cannot break bread with you. Yes, yes. Oh, we yes. build our, we set our fireworks by the roadside. <laughs> you can do her monologue. You build houses and drink highballs. I know the whole thing. Like, oh, I, really I, do. I believe She's you. Great. Wait till that comes up in the show now. You'll kill it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Please let it come up in the promoter. Okay, sorry. So um, back to answering that. I also love that there is a dance scene that's one of my favorite dance scenes where they do the tango and like all the champagne starts like popping. Mm. That <laughs> happens in this one as well. Yes. Um, who is that? Joan Cusack? It is Joan Cusack. That's the that's Fester's love interest. Mm -hmm. It is, yes. So great, so great. Look Just everything beautiful. about this mm -hmm. is this is my favorite Adams family. Um, uh, I miss Gomez. R.I.P. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Raul Julia. And there was, and we had talked about this on a previous episode, like there was a picture of Christina Ricci dressed as Morticia Adams. Mm -hmm. And I was like, awesome. we need this movie. You need yes. to be Morticia now. Yes. And then oh, we yeah. need a new. Like a prequel? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Well, she'd be maybe. young enough to play Morticia as a prequel. She's not young. She's not old enough to play Morticia as she was in the films or in the it might, be, it might be a pre it well, could be maybe. a prequel of like how she and gomez met yeah. maybe mm -hmm. there you go for some reason i'm picturing emile hirsch as um gomez i don't know why mm -hmm. i think because mm -hmm. he's like kind of small and like a weird little could guy see that. so could see that. i don't know why you know what is my um favorite moment is when joan cusack is having her her uh monologue you know at the end and is um, like basically explaining why she turned evil or she's already evil when she's a little mm -hmm. girl. And she's talking about her parents and how she's like, you know, I wanted ballerina Barbie. I was graceful, delicate. <laughs> and what did they give me? Malibu <laughs> Barbie. Yes. And so uh, my whole life, I was every single time someone says Barbie, I'm like, Malibu Barbie. Like you have to say it just like her. <laughs> I don't know why I'm stuck on that phrase, but Malibu that Barbie. right before she's going to like kill everyone? Yeah, okay, she is. Okay. She's like goodbye Allegedly. Does, it's awesome. yeah. i can i just want to go off one tangent about one thing okay is it okay. The okay no no, no. Okay. Right. i'm looking at my uh, yes. so i'm looking at my links so in, the, in this film so her her big threat which the one big are we finale, talking about in the, Adam's Values. the second one right yes, yeah the, the second, second one. one her big threat the big finale is that she's going to electrocute the family mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. okay she's like oh this is the this is the big thing oh no so they're going to electrocute them and it's like it's this it's this whole like you know i'm gonna kill you now but in the first movie wednesday electrocutes pugsley and like nothing happened like you can't kill these people no so that's not a real finale that's not a good threat but she doesn't know that well mm -hmm. i know she doesn't know that but still like and then pubert like flies off into the sky that's right and then he comes back down they wanted to name pugsley pubert but the censors were like nope sorry oh, like the in the original you know move our television show mm -hmm. um and then so for the movie why not what's wrong with uh, they just don't Does like puberty? that there's pube in puberty? the word <laughs> so there Pubes. you go and so they were like nope can't do it mm -hmm. gotta change it that's a good question was puberty created because of pubic hair or was pubic hair created because of puberty i don't know chicken and the egg, <laughs> chicken and the egg right I would imagine let's get down to the first. bottom of this hello and pubic <laughs> after that because that's what signifies puberty is hey, pubic hair the literal bottom of this. oh <laughs> Who knows? all right this podcast uh, is great because which, um... we talk about human anatomy <laughs> <laughs> we talk about the mummy <laughs> we talk about women's rights <laughs> What we about do. Debbie? We talk about everything. Oh, good. Um, right. So yeah, I just think that didn't think that that was a good climactic finale threat because I was like, mm -hmm. that's not a threat to them. I know she doesn't know that, but still, like in the world of the film, mm -hmm. we know that as audience members, so it's not suspenseful. Just want to throw that out there. I'm but sure. I do love the Thanksgiving Day uh, parade. I wanted that to parade. be finale, and like the family comes there, and then it's all mass chaos, and like a bunch of yuppies are dying, and children are drowning <laughs> in the lake. And I thought, like, I think that, that would a little been bit darker great. is what you yes. were hoping. For. I wanted a, a darker dark. film. I love dark movies. Yes. Cool. Okay, so Adam's Family Values. Adam's Family Values. Trivia about it. Um, you know, I just had a few things. 
that it was nominated for art and set direction okay. for, an, okay. for cool. an academy okay. award Good. um we know that morticia adams eyes are always specifically lit mm -hmm. like oh yeah that's like a a choice that they make so mm -hmm. she has just lights in her eyes the entire time it's angelica mm -hmm. houston yes. which is yes. unfortunate Looking for cool. her she is just she is morticia adams mm -hmm. she is perfect yeah, she was a great recast. Mm -hmm. Yvonne DiCarlo was amazing, but she was fantastic too. Mm -hmm. Carol Kane plays the grandma in this yeah. movie, but she's only a year older than Angelica Houston in real life. <laughs> That's so funny. So. Carol's always play the older characters. That's she's, true. Like she did in uh, uh, Princess Bride. She's so great. Oh, Crystal's yeah. wife in Princess Bride. That's Carol Kane. That's so funny. And let's see. While being brainwashed at camp, one of the films that Wednesday and Pugsley are made to watch is the musical Annie, mm. Mm. which was directed by Angelica Houston's father, John Houston. Mm -hmm. oh. That film also features Tim Curry, who went on to play Gomez Adams in the Adams Family Reunion. Wow. What's the Adams Family Reunion? Another movie. I have not seen <laughs> that. <laughs> that was the <laughs> summer camp one, right? Uh, this is the summer camp one. Oh, this was the summer camp one? Yes. This is the summer camp one. <laughs> oh, okay. What? Are you doing? Here's a, here's a here's a uh, here's a uh, little trivia for you. Who's who's Wednesday's brother? What's his name? Pugsley. 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 Do you know who Pugsley's uh, actual real life sister is? No. No, that Ar actor's sister. Yeah. No. Ariel Winter oh. uh, from Modern Family. Nice. Oh. Yeah, and she he took her mother's side against Ariel in the recent emancipation that happened between her and her mom. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Her, her, her sister was an actress too. Like the whole family's full of. Like she's just like, she's like the anti Kardashian in that way. She's like quiet about it. So, mm. yeah, very interesting. Mm. Yeah. Very, very interesting. You don't see that in IMDb. No, you sure <laughs> don't. Why do you know this? Do you have the inside gossip? I'm a massive gossip Ho fan. Like, Hollywood that's one of my quiet gossip? things. I go in the morning when I wake up and turn on after I check Twitter and Facebook and whatever, I go on to the superficial.com, delisted.com, and TMZ. And Ooh. I just kind of read up I secretly up get all the magazines whenever I'm at airports and I read all the gossip. Like, I need yeah. to, I still need to catch up on Brangelina Split. I still don't know what the rumors are, what she's accusing him of. I don't even know what's going she's down. She's accusing him of striking their child. On oh the plane. my gosh. He is claiming he is, and she's accusing him of being like a pothead. That's, well, but I don't think there's anything. It's not like wrong she's stable that. herself. Let's be real here. <laughs> anyway, yeah. This is true. She used to wear anyway. vials blood. of blood. Yeah. On her brother. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And she made no, out with her brother. That was a vial of blood of Billy Bob. Billy Bob. Billy Bob. Oh, she made out with her she brother at the Oscars. Yes. And when she, okay. Someone please rewatch her acceptance speech because she literally gets up there and goes, I am just so in love with my brother right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so thankful. And we're like, what the fuck is she talking <laughs> about? Like you won an Oscar for Girl Interrupted. Why? What's about yeah. your brother? Like that's the first thing she says. She's so weird. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Adam's family. <laughs> Let's go on to your, yours. Mine, that links okay. off is a television show. Yes. So was now. A this was a television show. Mm -hmm. It had a movie from it, which has spawned now a huge movie franchise. Um, I'm going to go with Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Ooh. Mission Impossible mm -hmm. was a show Ooh, yes. back in the, was it 60s? 60s Wait, yeah. was it a show or was it a radio it show? It was a show. It was a show show. Mm -hmm. Why did I think it was a radio show? I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but so it was a show. And then sure. the movie obviously came out in like 90. What was the first movie? 1999, I think. The first one? Oh, yeah, maybe 97. 99. Maybe you're right. I think it was 97. I think okay. it was a little early. I would then. guess. The year of 95? Like, if I were to guess. Mission Impossible, 1996. 96. Oh, Ooh. in between. Yeah. In between. Hey, if this were prizes right, I would win. Hey, <laughs> a new Come call. On down. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh. So, okay, Rogue Nation. I just rewatched this movie the other day. God damn, Rebecca Ferguson mm -hmm. is so good. So cool so good. Mm -hmm. in this movie. Because I saw her in she she's really underutilized in The Girl on the Train. Like oh. I, I don't know if you like if you guys have seen Didn't get great reviews. The, didn't get great reviews. Right. Uh, to be honest, it was trying to be like too gone girl and it didn't have mm. the snuff. It doesn't have that David Fincher sharpness to gotcha, it to gotcha. be a gone girl. But the story is that of kind of like a gone girl thing. Okay. Anyway, but Rebecca Ferguson is in that as like this kind of throwaway character and i'm like what are you doing you got a freaking you know mi6 um or what's is it mi6 the name for the for bon mm -hmm. for england great britain's thing mi6 yeah am i like our cia is the mi6 yeah. or whatever it's be mi5 mm -hmm. now, anyway, it's MI6. now it's mi6 um you have this great woman who just played like an mi6 agent in this amazing action film and she's like a just a mom B roll like a, a B roll like I thought that was kind of bullshit anyway in this film there is a moment which I thought was a 
complete fuck you to Jurassic World, where she stops in the middle of a fight to take off her heels, which makes complete sense to me. Yeah. And they said they were like, we didn't really mean that to be like a in your face kind of thing. It just kind of happened. Um, but then once Jurassic World came out, they kind of put that in the trailer to be like, no, 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 look. And she takes off her really good shoes. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's a fantastic film. Fantastic villain. That guy, I don't know if you remember, he was in Prometheus. Mm -hmm. He played the the geolo geologist yeah. who was like, I like rocks. I love rocks. <laughs> yeah. Like he doesn't want anything to do with the monsters. Right. Which, and he's the one that gets lost even though he has the map. Not to get into Prometheus. I mean. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Tangent. Again, Stacy, calm down. Reel it back in. Okay. Um, he plays a fantastic villain because he's so, like, he's quiet, but like this weird, like shaking inside rage that's mm -hmm. like about to burst out at any moment. And he's, he's just amazing. He's been, he's been another, he's a great British actor. He's been in a lot of different TV shows and stuff. Like he was on one of the Borgia TV sure. shows. There's like three or four of those. One of them, Jeremy Irons plays the Pope. I, it's, it's like pretty yeah, epic. Yeah, the Tudors. No, 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 not the Tudors. The Borgia, Borgias? The Borgias, yeah. The Tudors is great. Which but one is Jeremy Irons playing the Pope one? He, in the Borgias. Oh, thank you. okay. You said one of them. So yeah, there's several shows. There's several Borgias. There's several Borgia shows. Like one, Law and Order with yeah. all their spinoffs. Really? No, it, it, well, oh, it's just it's all different shows. One. So there's Got one. You mean, do you mean seasons? No, 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 not I'm seasons. So confused. There's all right. one show <laughs> called The Borgias, and it's, it was yeah. on like the CW or something. Jeremy Irons is in it. Um, Holiday Granger plays the daughter. Okay. And then there's another show, completely different show about the same set of people, mm -hmm. the Borgias. And there's this rant, and it's terrible. One is like super, super terrible. Yeah. And the one with Jeremy Irons is like pretty okay. And yeah. I've seen every episode of both series. I don't don't ask me why <laughs> I have watched <laughs> this. <laughs> Complete waste of time. Um, Which is I the one with John? Uh, uh, what's his face that plays uh, King Henry VIII? Which one's that one? Is I that the know. Tudors? Then maybe that's the Tudors with Sam Neill as the Pope. Yeah, oh, the Cardinal, I can't Sam the Cardinal. Down. Yeah, it's got to be. I, yeah. I literally yeah. can't even remember. Also, there's rain on CW. Rain is actually a guilty pleasure. I watched the first few seasons. <laughs> I knew it. Because it's complete and total historical bullshit. It really is. But it's like Pretty Little Liars, but with like royalty. Yeah. And all their costumes, like they would not the have tutors. worn a thing with like the lace and the push up. No, they didn't have that. They didn't have their hair all plated. No, but it's just, it's like this makeup y modern day rain royalty. I think it is great. Let's all get back to what I'm talking about. I completely forgot what movie I'm talking about. What are we, like, literally, I really don't Mission even know. Impossible. I don't know Mission where we went, Ghost but Protocol. I'm just no, going to go to sleep Rogue now. Nation. Falls the fourth one. All right. Yes. Anyway, we're okay. back. Mission Impossible, Rogue Nation. <laughs> British actors, something yeah. about... Okay, Rogue here's what I don't like about Rogue Nation. I'm yes. sorry. That underwater scene, I, I he could not have handle to, that. No, he would have died. I he always loved the uh, Tom Cruise does his own stunts. And I was like, listen, um, first of all, just because he does his own stunts doesn't mean he's only doing one take. <laughs> so <laughs> there's that. The other part is I'm like, he must be at the point in his life where nothing gets him high. Like, and I'm not talking about like drug high. Right. I'm talking about like, there is no, nothing that like will get him to like the, oh my gosh, that was awesome. Yes. I'm, I'm feeling this afterglow. Like I loved what just happened that you have to now do your own stunt and put your life on the line every single time. That's the only way that he yeah. can get high is by maybe I'll die in this. Yeah. Let's remake cliffhanger and he can do that. Yeah. That, uh, transfer across with the planes the most dangerous stunt ever done that's right that's right uh, that was real uh, you guys know. so was him hanging off the side of a plane that was real we don't know how real. high up well, the plane they, went they first of all it, well, we don't know all of the if rigging it got off the ground I know, i'm i'm it giving was props. yes five thousand feet in the air okay that's 1. we also kilometers. don't know the rigging like we don't know how they he was strapped, attached to it him in. it's not like he wasn't you know there was stuff would you do that green screen and you know someone else tried it first Brian, would you do that no would well, i then, do then that you have to give it respect well, no, sure he had, to, he had to do that five times I i'm just saying people mm -hmm. think that what they see is real and that's not the well, truth well it was really it was really difficult to do it well of course and he did but he did it himself <laughs> and they strapped him in but you're I'm such sure an ass was... right now. You're being what? such an I ass right now. Not. You He's really such a, are. You're such a stunt you're, such a, you're, such a, you're so cynical. Gosh. Give him respect. Hanging off a plane on 5,000 feet, no matter how many takes it takes, it's still pretty amazing. He still did it. 
Well, you know what's fun? Okay. Like the like Here's, the hotel in Dubai in the fourth. There are so that many people yeah, he did that, one. that are on the front lines that do oh, even yes. harder things. Well, See, here course. she is. You should know. Well, they can't up, sell up, a on movie. Her, up on her true. pedestal for the little guy, for yeah, the stunt I respect guys. That. I respect that. That, that never that never get on. But you know what? Here's know, the world's they need smallest violin playing for the stuntmen that don't get that's in, that's recognized because you know what should get recognized. they get they get paid though they get they paid do. a lot for what but you they know do. someone else and is doing that stunt before he does that yes, stunt. true well, very yeah, true yeah, they're yeah. trying it out they have but, to i mean because no, i want to see is someone going to die from this first yes and if they don't i'll do it right like but you know not a movie doing star that. i'm not saying doesn't matter, what doesn't they matter. do <laughs> that what they do doesn't matter it does. i'm saying you know like the public is going to recognize like them because they're not tom cruise right. they're not a movie star mm-hmm. they're not going to get yes. a household name thing yeah. but do people Roger become Johnson stunt people the film. because they want to be famous and be a household name no it's because they like doing the stuff yeah people do stunt because they like doing the stuff yeah i know a few people are stuntmen they love it and i I you know, would love to be a stunt woman. I would yeah. risk my life to be able to like be on movie sets and just you know kind of do like random little things. That'd be amazing. You know, you can study to do it. Yeah. I, wait. Go wait. There's like a school. school? Yeah, there's stunt school. Then you I get certified. I want to go to stunt school. Yeah, then you get certified. You should do because it. stunts. People think it's like jumping off buildings and stuff, and it is. But sometimes mm-hmm. there's there's normal stunts mm-hmm. you have to yeah. do because just because of insurance. So what you have to, if you have to do like a roll or yeah. like jump off something. <laughs> Like they the get little people, stunts. The little stunts. Yeah. I the would do foley stunts. stunts is yeah. what I'll call sure, them. Sure, <laughs> sure. Foley stunts. Yeah, there's yes. a, it should be a co- it's cottage. It's probably a cottage industry now because more women are being put in these sci-fi action mm-hmm. adventure. They're being put in leads in all these franchises. So you're naturally going yes. to have the need for more female stunt people. So you should get on it now, Stacey. You're a little tall, but it's okay. I am. I am well, well, no. How tall are you? I'm 5'8". Without shoes? Without shoes. With shoes, okay. I'm like six two. Okay, fair. That's yeah. fair. Mm-hmm. That's tall. Wonder I'm Woman is tall. tall. There's a, they're short tall. ladies oh, acting. Yeah, they're, and you know what is funny though is that they get women. Oftentimes, will be like maybe five foot. They get them if they're small in stature and kind of petite to do children's stunts. Yes, mm-hmm. they like do. if you like, I saw a video and it was like I don't know why I was watching this video, but the direct not it's like the behind the scenes. Yeah commentary of the Amityville horror remake with Brian Reynolds. <laughs> you watch the most I interesting stuff. I don't know why I watch these things, but <laughs> the little girl in the yes. movie has to like walk across the roof. Mm-hmm. And obviously they mm-hmm. can't have a little girl that's like five years old do that. So they get a woman to do it. And she was a really small woman. Mm-hmm. Not, she was like five foot. Like okay. she was very small and very petite. And they had her just put on the little overalls. Just kind yep. of climb one over. And I was like, <laughs> I could do that. Like yes. if you are small, We got to get you on have Fast odd, and Furious. Yes. Yes. If Stunting. you have like an odd, not odd body shape, but if you have like a, if if your your dimensions, everything fit in a very specific category, mm-hmm. you could do those things. If you're mm-hmm. like, I'm tall and thin, or if like there are people that have a condition where you have the really long limbs, they play like creatures in horror movies all the time. Yeah. Like yeah. I would so... Hello, get paid to like go dress up in costumes and be on a movie set all day, like a few times a year and make bank. Yep. Fuck yeah, I would do that. Like do it. Do it. Okay. I really wish I had a weird body and I could do it. Let's close this up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and what then are your gonna, movies? We're gonna go <laughs> off of Okay, so we went Damn from it, let's, we went from Hell or High Water mm-hmm. to Unforgiven to Maverick. From mm-hmm. Maverick, we went to uh movies that were you know, started as television shows. I did Adam's Family Values. Mm-hmm. Stacey did uh, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Now John is going to go off of Unforgiven okay. and link to something. Okay. Can I link to two clean, underappreciated Clint Eastwood movies? Yes. Does that work? That works. Sure, okay. Sure, sure, One sure. of them is a Western. Okay. And okay. it's called Pale Rider. Never heard from, of it. Na- from 1984. A lot of people haven't. It's uh, Clint Eastwood and uh, Michael Moriarty from Law & Order fame. First season of Law & Order. Mm-hmm. Who is the attorney. Uh, the main DA. Uh, so the film is another one of these uh, uh, person with no name, you know, coming into a town. There's an evil, uh, rich guy who's running the town, trying to naturally yes. stop uh, these uh, people who've come into the town to ho- look for gold. Mm-hmm. And he, whenever they find gold, he uh, kind of undervalues their gold uh, and then tries to uh, take their claims. Okay. And tries to okay. run them off the land whenever they find. So he's essentially using them to find gold without hiring labor. Mm-hmm. And then once they find gold, he he has a henchman. He has yeah. henchmen who come in and push them. An off early. Them. He's an early mobster. Yeah, basically. Yeah, basically. And it's a uh, and Clint Eastwood comes in and he is called preacher because he shows up with a 
uh, priest thing on his neck. And so, thing? yeah, a little white thing with, and so people call him, he's not a preacher, but people call him that as a nickname. So mm -hmm. he, he tries to, he tries to help people and figure it out and reluctantly gets involved. Like he always does in every film. And then eventually he, you find out the reason he's getting involved uh, was because he knew that the main henchman was a guy who had tried to kill him years ago when he was working in another town and shot him five times through the chest oh. in a circular fashion in a circle and he didn't die so what That's happens is, is as the film goes on you find this out and then he sets everything up and richard dissert who people might remember from law and order he plays the evil guy in charge of the whole town and then you have these smaller character actors play the henchmen of the main henchmen uh and uh, the dude who did frank nitty in untouchables he's one of the guys uh, and then a couple other people are in there that you might recognize from other films. But anyway, as the film progresses, uh, he, uh, the Michael Moriarty is in love with this woman, uh, but she uh, does not feel the same for him. She knows he can take care of her and do all the things he has to do, but she doesn't love him. But with Clint Eastwood coming in, she falls in love with Clint Eastwood, but so does her daughter. And so awesome. there's a weird kind of who's a girl from All My Children. Do you guys watch All My Children? Uh, no. no. She's one of these actresses from All My Children, I've done for years and years and years. But anyway, so it's a whole thing. And so it, the whole film ends with him having the final battle with all the henchmen and the main henchmen. And he ends up, I don't know, I don't want to well, spoil let's it. Let's just leave it yeah, there. Let's leave it at that. It's a great ending, fantastic Western. It's a really underappreciated Western. Um, and it's one you can put on on a Saturday afternoon, just relax in your chair and enjoy. Pale so Rider. What, Pale uh, Rider. Yeah. All right. Cool. What? time is it 1984 no that's oh, when it came out but what time it's is set it in the in? west uh well i guess when the gold rush was happening okay. so maybe the late 1800s early 1900s okay. yeah okay. that kind of okay. jazz so okay. and it's uh yeah and it's out there and it's, it's a really enjoyable film and there's some really uh tough emotional moments and it's a good it's good stuff uh the other one is called heartbreak ridge I've heard that, of this. I don't know if anyone has seen Heartbreak Ridge. Or maybe well. I'm thinking Hacksaw Ridge, <laughs> That's which coming is coming out, out soon. Yes. Heartbreak Ridge was uh, done in, uh, once again, it's like in the early 80s film when Clint was trying to figure out what he was going to do next. Coming out of the 70s, he'd had this reputation, obviously, but in the 80s, you know, big hair, electro mm -hmm. music, electronic mm -hmm. music, mm -hmm. and the tastes, Goonies, all those kinds of kind of uh, films were coming in. And Goonies kind of, is not, eh. Yeah, kind of. Well, I'm not a I'm not a Goonies. Neither am I. Oh, I don't you get guys. it. But Power mainly because I saw it when I was older, and I was like, I just don't. I, yeah. this, this it's was, the ultimate this isn't for me. adventure. It's, okay, not to go off on a tangent about it, the Goonies. Going back yeah. to whatever you're. If Goonies about. never said die, there would have been a sequel. Uh, so anyway, okay. the thing with uh, Heartbreak Ridge is it's set right after Gr the Granada thing uh, excursion we have we had under Reagan. It's he's uh, uh, Clint Eastwood is this like grizzled former. A uh, drill sergeant who who gets assigned to these like motley crew of people. Basically, it's like a it's like Dirty Dozen light. These guys are they're not criminals or anything, but they're just like they're they're like malcontents. Uh, it's basically like detention. The, these are all guys from detention in the military, the Marines. And uh, Clint Eastwood gets assigned to him because Clint Eastwood, kind of like Gene Hackman and Hoosiers, he kind of made the mistakes when he was in charge before, and now this. Uh, this uh, uh, common commander is giving him a second chance who's an old friend of his. And so he has to whip these guys into shape. And one of the guys is Mario Van Peebles, which is a really interesting thing. And he's this like black guy, who, I mean, he's a black guy obviously, but he's this guy who like plays a rock guitar uh, on the side night uh, on the clubs around the town. Oh. And all, but he has to kind of whip them into shape and he is being pushed up against by this other guy who's a, a very evil kind of lieutenant or a captain rather who thinks that he knows better and that Clint Eastwood is uh, archaic and he's the new modern military. And so they battle back and forth through the training camp and you see Eastwood whip these guys into shape and then they actually go into battle in Grenada and uh, are amazing in it. And so it's just it's just classic Clint Eastwood doing the things that he does. If you want to enjoy him in these films, go and watch the, or rent these films. They're, they're enjoyable stuff to do like on a Saturday afternoon and people don't talk about them enough and they're really good. Okay. There we go. Pale Rider yes. and a Heartbreak Ridge. Heartbreak Ridge. Yeah, for all you military guys out there. Okay. Cool. Sounds amazing. So there we, go. we went from Hell or High Water. From there, we linked it to westerns that came out after 1990 with Unforgiven, as well as Maverick. Off of Maverick, we went to movies that were television shows, and we talked about Adam's Family Values, as well as Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation, and off of Unforgiven, John did underrated Clint Eastwood movies mm -hmm. with Heartbreak Ridge and Pale Rider. Yeah. So there you go. Those are Those our are films there you go. for today. We yeah. covered a lot today. Yeah, we did. We, did. we are lot. coming to the end of our show. And this is when we do movie link tweets. I tweet out the Yay! first. Okay. 
the first link, I say, uh, what is your favorite uh, Western that came out after 1990? And here are some responses. I got a ton of responses. Okay. The, okay. the most responses we ever got was for our war episode. Mm -hmm. And this would be the second. Wow. Oh, like, okay. So I had to narrow it down. People love Westerns. They do. And so here we go. Um, ben Not Bateman. <laughs> ben Bateman, Nick Scarpino, ben. and Josh Tapia. Um, all people that have been on the show. What? Wait. Yes. Uh, they all said Unforgiven. Jeremy Johns, Brian Hurst, and Mark Freeman say Tombstone. Ugh. Tombstone is great. Ugh. I just watched that for the first time. <laughs> Lon says The Assassination of Jesse James. Yes, that's a that's good great. film. Excuse me. The whole title of the film is The Assassination yes. of Jesse James by the Coward Robert uh, Ford. Yes. So let's get it together, you guys. Okay. I put that in my top 10 for top 10 Western and top 10 shows. It's great. great. Randall Sands says True Grit. Yes. Good. Film. good Graham film. Har the remake or the original? Well, the remake. The remake because it's 1990. Oh, Graham yeah. Harwell, The Quick and the Dead. Chris Skalicki. Sure. Did I Skalicki. say it right? Did I say it right? Sure. I don't know. He's I don't the know. one that comes up with the questions for the show. He's great. Yes. Yep. He's been on the show as well. Sure. 310 to Yuma. Yes, good question. Good one. George McCann and first time watchers say open range. Yeah. Albert Dong says cool. true grit as well. And Colby Bean says Django Unchained. Oh yeah, Django's good. Okay, okay. Open Are range is fantastic. People need to see that. It's Kevin Costner directed that film. Kevin Costner, Robert Duvall, and uh Annette Benning. Just fantastic. Mm -hmm. With Richard which Richard Gambone is the main villain. Really great stuff, that film. Very lyrical western. And we also link it to Kevin Bacon. All right, so Kevin Bacon was in Beyond All Boundaries, which is a short film with Chris Pine, who was in Hell or High Water. So that was a short one. Mm, yeah. film. That's pretty short. And now oh. it is time for Better with Rocky. Would Unforgiven be better? Or not Unforgiven. Would Hell or High Water be better with Sylvester Stallone as Rocky, as the waitress oh. in the steak place? <laughs> now we have, I feel like we have a lot of new viewers, so we need to explain this. <laughs> yes, explain please, it. including a, me. <laughs> during a uh, an episode about Rocky, we discovered that I do a wonderful impression of Sylvester Stallone as Rocky. Okay. So we wonderful have now meaning terrible meaning <laughs> very skillful at it. So we okay. have developed a tradition of taking a monologue from our feature uh -huh. film. And I do it in the voice of Sylvester Stallone as Rocky, okay. as that character. So this is Sly himself, Rocky Balboa, if he were the waitress in Hell or High Water. Right. <clears throat> here we go. <clears throat> I've been working here since 1987. Ain't nobody ever ordered another but a T-bone steak and baked potato. Except one time, this asshole from New York ordered a trout. We ain't got no goddamn trout, yo! <laughs> Now, for Great. Those, I love it. I want to clarify this real quick. <laughs> okay. For those that have seen the film or not seen the film, that's the way. That's the one scene with the waitress. That's the older waitress. Yes. The younger waitress Correct. is the one from that TV show that with Mike and Molly. Mm -hmm. okay. This the older waitress who is fantastic. That mm -hmm. cantankerous. She's that's a local West Texas native. Has to be. Yes. She's so great. With her skin hanging off her, I was like, oh, yeah. it was perfect. A, nothing like a good weathered face yeah. of a Texas gal. <laughs> you know, she's seen some better days. She's been rode hard, put away wet, you know. A few times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By a few different people. I, John, oh, thank you so much you. for returning to the show. <laughs> what a fun it's and been random a pleasure. weird episode. It was great. Incredibly. Oh, geez, a lot has Incredibly. happened. A lot's gone down. I feel like I know myself more. I know my body more. Really? Sure. We talked about anatomy. Mm -hmm. We talked about women's rights. Mm -hmm. We talked stunts. about mummy stunts. Um, I'm gonna be kind of become a stunt woman now. I yeah. Just need to get my my limbs lengthened so I can be like in horror movies. That'd be great. Yes. Um. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Where can everyone find you, John? Oh yeah, you guys can always find me at the Roca says T H E R O C H A S A Y S. See all the shows I'm hosting, co-hosting. Uh, show down this Friday against Mark Ellis. Baby carrots. Whoa! It's time to be carrot juice. I'm gonna drink you down. I drink your milkshake. <laughs> I'm gonna take you down, son. I'm taking you down once and for all because I need that belt around my waist. Dan Merle, get ready. I know you made your jokes on Twitter. Oh, you're gonna grave in the second hand. Blah blah blah. I kiss my ass. I'm coming for you. It doesn't Dang, matter. It doesn't matter. Good. Mark Ellis, you're one of the most difficult people I've ever confronted, and I, I don't know I, my strategy. Like I had to work hard, so we'll figure it out. But I am gonna kick your ass. Get ready. You're going down, son. I heard him call you Howdy Doody on Movie yeah. Talk the other day. Did he? Did he? Yeah. Mr. Mr. <laughs> did E.T. call me how to do? I mean, look at the size of those eyes. My God. 
He can see into the future with his eyes. Give me a break. Stacy. Yes. You can find me on Twitter at SOHoward2012. You can find me on Instagram at Stacy O. Howard. Just all, all the time. That's, that's it. Yeah. Nice. Where can we find you? Uh, you can find me trying to pick out the most Western Let's looking shirt really that I have. The camera. I like the. That's cl- what I. That's cl- what I tried to do. Cl- Clint just said like. <laughs> uh, finally, Roka is the just third best looking person camera. on the podcast. I like that. Um, Agreed. Say that one more time because I couldn't hear it. Clint said, uh, "Roka, for once, he is the third best looking person on the podcast." I agree. Oh, I'm happy that I got the third. Oh, thanks, thanks. And you can also find me on uh, Twitter at Miss Movies. So there you go. I need you to. I need you to be a little more excited about this. You at, can find me at Miss Movies on is. Twitter. Hey, this Whoa, is my energy. hosting voice. Good vibes. Hey, Gotta guys. do the vocal fry. Thank you, guys. <laughs> You've been really great today. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time. Bye 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 b